So to answer the UNFCC's question, you need to know the climate sensitivity. And as you all know, the Charney report in 79 came up with a sensitivity range of 1.5 to 4.5. And 2007, do the math how many years later, um, basically the, change hasn't, the range hasn't fallen. Um, by the way, if the climate sensitivity is 3 degrees, then a 2 degree limit implies we can go to 445 ppm. Um, one of the sort of hot debates for Copenhagen is should we aim for 350 ppm, which is now a global campaign to get people behind, three, recently endorsed by Nick Stern, um, uh, that we should all aim for 350 ppm. What does this mean and why? Why are people aiming for this? Well, the worry here is, again, because you're asking the wrong question, you find yourself tying yourself in knots to answer it in a way that makes sense. So the argument which is generally handed out for why we should aim for 350 ppm um, is illustrated by this diagram here, which shows um, the carbon dioxide concentration associated with different levels of equilibrium warming. First of all, if you assume a standard three degree sort of climate sensitivity, and then people cite, ah, oh, but Hansen 2009 have shown paleoclimatic evidence, which implies that way back in the, uh, in the distant past, the temperatures were around six degrees higher when um, carbon dioxide levels were five, that's after ice caps have melted and so on. So, um, uh, it, you know, uh, even Mark Linus can join those lines up and say, oh, well, the climate sensitivity must be six degrees. Actually, you know, Mark, Mark, Mark's a very intelligent person. He told me so yesterday, lunchtime. Um, and, uh, uh, so, and say, well, here you are. I follow this line. This is just a log curve, by the way. I'm sure Mark's good at logs. And, uh, uh, and there you are. Look, 350, two degrees. OK? Hey, presto. That's why we need to aim for two degrees, because because Jim Hansen has shown this paleoclimate evidence that climate sensitivity is really six degrees. That's the wrong answer because, of course, what actually happens is the system follows this curve, then eventually your ice caps collapse and it wobbles up there, and then, of course, if you try and cool it down again without any ice caps, you end up higher than what you were to start with. Okay, so the danger with this sort of argument is if you're saying, well, the IPCC thought the climate sensitivity was three degrees, but they got it wrong, Jim Hansen's shown it's six degrees, so we need to stabilize at 350 QED. Um, the problem, there's lots of problems with this. First of all, uh, to get an IPCC-like consensus that the climate sensitivity is six degrees will, I assure you, take a long time. And Jim Hansen will say, well, that's because the IPCC is populated by dinosaurs like myself who take a lot of convincing, but I don't think I'm the only dinosaur on this one. I think I, I've got some um, allies on, the, on, on that front. Melting ice sheets, of course, for this six degree sensitivity to manifest itself may take even longer. And so your targets basically apply to some indefinite date in the future. In the future. And also, there's a fun fundamental logical problem here. If the aim is to save the ice sheets, then why use a climate sensitivity value which assumes the ice sheets melt? You don't have to be Bjorn Lomborg. I don't think he's spotted this one yet, but he probably will. And uh, OK, none of this argument is necessary. OK, the emission policies you need to avoid more than two degrees of warming are the same, regardless of the very long-term concentration you aim for. The problem with this whole argument is you're asking the wrong question to start with. Asking what is the very long-term carbon dioxide concentration humanity should be aiming for is not a helpful question because we can't answer it using existing science. We can't answer it using any conceivable scientific investigation we could perform today. Here's a better question. 